Well, should we begin? We've got 10 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and start my, my video. So welcome, everybody. We have a group from uh, Renton Technical College in Renton, uh, Washington, and they're going to talk about empowering innovation and unleashing potential faculty driven exploration through OER grants. I'm Nancy Chapko, and I'm going to be the session host uh, for the presentation. And the Wisconsin Open Education Sym Symposium is committed to being a safe, accessible, equitable, and inclusive environment for all. Our code of conduct is in effect during this session and in all conference spaces. Please take a moment to reflect on how your actions can build up our open education community and support diverse voices. This session is being recorded and will be captioned for future viewing. Thanks for joining us. A couple things uh, to, to maybe orient you using WebEx. In the lower left-hand corner of your screen is the closed caption option. You can turn that on at any time. You also have a chat option in the lower right-hand area of the screen. And I need to ask our presenters how you'd like to handle questions. As we go at the end, I will monitor chat for you. Any preferences? Taking questions? Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll yeah. take them as they come then. How's that sound? Okay. And That's we'll okay. start about five minutes before the end so that, you know, if you're holding questions, we can answer those as well. So I'm going to ask our host if he would please uh, select the record option. Yeah, we are recording already. Excellent. Thank you. Um, go ahead. Okay. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, it's so great to be here. So we are from Renton Technical College. Um, let me go ahead and share my presentation as I go. Can everyone see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. So um, there's six of us, so there's a lot to get through. Um, four of us are here present and then two have recorded videos. They didn't wanna miss it, but they, wouldn't, um, they, they weren't able to make the time. Um, and really what we're gonna be talking about today is, um, and I'll have everyone introduce themselves as they give their part just to save time. But we're going to be talking about um, our OER grant process and how that really helps uh, drive innovation and exploration of OERs um, for our faculty. Um, so what I love to do whenever I talk about this is uh, take, a, uh, take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Um, we know last week we had a inter huge international conference, uh, OER Global or Open Education Global. Um, so this is a movement at the global level. And um, I love to talk to my administrators um, about the fact that uh, the federal government is investing heavily into OER as well. And so, um, for example, the State Board of Community and Technical Colleges of Washington State um, they've received a $1.8 million grant to create a, uh, six open textbooks uh, in our state using the experts at our um, institutions to write those textbooks. Um, and I'm actually uh, a part of that project. And so thinking like big picture um, and, and just understanding that OER is not going away, open education is a growing movement and um, it's something that we need to get ahead of and get uh, and really get going on. Um, that helps kind of, uh, you know, that message kind of um, really helps uh, lay the, the groundwork for getting support um, at the administrative level for us. And then understanding how we as individual um, higher ed institutions can play a role um, in terms of supporting our faculty to explore and to adopt and to create new OERs. Um, at Renton Technical College, we saved our students almost 400K 
last year from OER based courses. This year we're on track to save them more than 450,000. And so, and we grow a lot of that through our grant program, which we'll get into, but a little bit more of the brief history. So in 2019, a number of our administrators and faculty um, went to the Washington Annual Cam uh, Conference of Canvas. Um, and it was hosted by our sister college, Tacoma, and they were just blown away because Tacoma is very, very OER focused. Um, they're one of the leaders in our state. They probably were the leader in our state uh, early on. And they saved their students a million dollars plus a year um, using OER. And so learning about that, we were really, really inspired and brought a lot of those lessons and, and that vision back to RTC. Um, we started embedding some of this into um, uh, our professional development and just kind of having conversations around it. And um, faculty were using OER um, kind of ad hoc for their courses but it was really a couple years ago when we formed the OER steering group, um, which we also copied that name from Tacoma, right? Why reinvent the wheel? And we used a lot of their kind of like framework in their documents, um, which they released openly. Um, so it's really learning, looking around, learning from what others have done and then adapting it to our needs, which is the whole spirit of OER um, anyway. So we um, started doing these grants. And right now we run two cycles of grants per year, um, typically about five grantees per cycle. So that's about 10 um, grantees per year. And we call them our OER heroes um, because um, the people who go through this grant process and create their project, they really become knowledgeable in OER, not just OER in general, but specific to their field. And they can become those ambassadors um, for their colleagues in their program to help them along and to be, you know, kind of to, to help them uh, start their OER journeys. Um, and so our steering group started with just three people, um, two faculty, one administrators. It has grown to 11 faculty members. Um, and staff members, and uh, several of those came through our program. Um, and so it's, uh, this is another way where they can continue to push um, open education uh, at our institution and really be those voices. Um, the meetings are led by myself, the OER librarian, um, and we are sponsored by, uh, we're under the, the the instruction department. So the VP of instruction is our cabinet level sponsor. She's been a leader in the OER field uh, for years also. So she gets it. And it's really, really helpful to have that level of support. Um, and I always think about three big buckets when we're talking about institutional support. We have the personnel, people like myself who have OER in my title. Um, OER is what I do, but then we have our e-learning director or Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning, our fancy word for that um, department. Um, she is a huge advocate in OER and helps us fund uh, through our part of her budget as well. We have people at the state level that we partner with, that we liaison, and um, their initiatives um, we're taking part in, and then what we're doing, they're taking an interest in and supporting. Um, so it's really a um, dynamic and uh, synergistic relationship. We have the infrastructure, the funding for the grants, but also we purchase things like, um, Al will get into kind of um, being able to embed H5P into Canvas, like looking at different things to implement and integrate OER, uh, whether it's Pressbooks or another thing. Um, we have a really, really well used and um, a good resource, which is our LibGuide our uh, OER resource guide, um, and then really raising the level of the culture. Um, I mentioned how we support these faculty. Well, then they come to our um, steering group um, and they start talking to their colleagues and they're sharing um, things in presentations like this in our PD Fridays and really um, plugging others into the journey. Um, this just kind of shows how we've kind of iteratively um, advanced. Um, 
our our grant process of we've added different um, options. We've reviewed and revised the uh, application. We in implemented a rubric, and I have worked really hard on um, like solidifying funding into the future so we can make this sustainable. And right now, two of our deans are funding this out of their budgets, and they are committed to this mission. Um, some of the support that we offer our grantees once they're in the program, uh, we help. We can help them identify who we are. We can help them with some course design, we can help them implement um, the OER, provide the attributions, that's something that I do as the OER librarian. Um, but also we can uh, help them with professional development, whether it's the um, OER 101 workshop that's provided at the state level, which is excellent, or something more local and tailored to their specific needs. Uh, we can sit down with them 101 and we meet regularly with them as they're going through the process. Um, and then when they're done, we try really hard to share the excellent work that they've created, whether it's in the Canvas Commons, whether it's through a press book, whether it's in OER Commons or all of the above. Um, we, want, we want others to know about their work and really, and we've been creating videos um, such as the one we just did with Al, um, that we're now going to publicize and have them talk about this process so that others can learn from their journeys. And then we offer a stipend, um, which um, I'll be the first to admit is nowhere near enough for um, the great work that they're doing, but it definitely does recognize them and, and, and de definitely helps incentivize. Um, so with that, I will kick things over to uh, Cindy because she is one of our OER heroes. Well, Cindy, thank go ahead you. and introduce yourself and go ahead. Thank you, Dai. And thank you for your openings. And also, I'd like to thank Nancy hosting this event. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Cindy Xie. I am a biology instructor at Renton Technical College from Washington. And I have integrated OER textbook into my class, and it's my great pleasure to be here today and share my experience. I will discuss my journey in finding, adopting, adapting, and creating OER, uh, along with student feedback and its impact on their learning outcome. So first of all, finding OER. And finding OER for me, it is um, taking some time. And at, in the beginning, I attending a workshop. And during that workshop, I finding there are a couple of OER links. For example, the OER resource like OER Commons and IRSC libraries. But finally, I determined to select an OpenStack concept, concept of biology using my uh, classroom. So when I adapting concept of biology into my classroom, there are some reasons because this is a OER textbook aligned with the student introduction biology course requires for non-major students. And this textbook providing engaging content and promote scientific literacy. So why using this textbook, um, when I adapt this textbook to my classroom, I also created press book, uh, which I collaborated and learned from the uh, day. We talk a couple of times when I create this textbook, press book, and eventually I develop a new chapter focus on the molecular biology, gene expression, gene editing into this press book. And it is used to my classroom. Uh, can you go to next slide, please? Yes, thank you. So when I applied to my classroom for two quarters, I created a survey to my students and asked them to give me some feedback about using this OER material. So my student uh, very collaborated. So I summarized their feedback in this slides. And student didn't feel any difficulty to download the OER textbook from the link I provided. 
and it is a great cost saving benefit for students. They are really appreciate. Also, when students using the computer, they find it's easy to access this material. And this material designed by starting with the learning objectives. So when students using this material, they feel it very helpful to prepare the exams. And also the textbook offered a variety range of relative biology information. Uh, also student expressed that they would like to refer this open stack textbook to future students. Further, I asked a student, can you give me some feedback? How can I improve this material? And I got two suggestions. So first, they would like to say, if I can breaking down the subtopic and to each of the modules, which will benefit for their learning. And second, they like to me to adding more visualized image and even videos, maybe helping them to understanding the content better. Next slide, please. So based on student feedback, I did some, uh, I did, I adding some new features for the press book. The whole chapter, the whole bunch of the um, book has been divided into book chapters, and I insert the book chapter to each weekly modules, which helping students focus on the each weekly modules learning objective. And secondly, I created some videos and inserts to the press book, also adding some more image into it. So I, for my journey, I think this is integrated um, process. It's still starting from the finding the OER material and adopting into my classroom, get a student the feedback. I can do adapting as well as eventually create a new OER press book and has been published to share with this learning community. Next, please. In order to exam, how about the student learning, learning outcome based on using this OER? I have compared two, I have compared two groups uh, and did um, a small cohort analysis. So I do teach some students in the past with paid textbook. And also I have my students using my OER textbook. So based on the learning outcome, I set up the grade scale on 60% or 75%. So from this data, you can see in my paid textbook groups, there are total 37 students and versus 54 students from using OER textbook. The OER textbook group has a similar student learning outcome compared to the paid textbook group. And this data analysis also has been validated by Alan, my colleagues. But for my OER textbook, each student saved $100. So totally estimation, it is $5,400 saved during my OER cohort group. So this is my learning journey for using and apply OER in my classroom. I'm looking forward to hear more colleagues' insights. So now I'd like to hand it to my colleague, Ellen. Thank you. There it is. I was having trouble with the mute. Thank you, Cindy. And thank you, Day. And thank you, Dr. Chapko. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, well, I guess it's still morning for everybody here, unless there's overseas people. Um, my presentation is uh, uh, goes over some of the things that have already been mentioned. I, I will add a few things. Um, OER can offer us new perspectives, some topics. It can offer us new, uh, new pedagogy. Um, uh, in particular, a, excuse me, just one sec. 
It, when we adopt and adapt or create OER, it can give us new perspectives on standard topics because instructors who might have taught the same course for many years have seen a lot of the existing pedagogy and often develop their own approach. And OER allows for fine tuning of the pedagogy. Um, it also offers the possibility of updated content for current tech applications and is especially useful for professional technical programs, uh, which we have quite a few of here at Renton Tech. It can also be used for to customize uh, the particular needs of the college or the program. And it can easily be integrated into Canvas and other LMSs, Pressbooks, and other content management systems. Um, and if we can get the next slide, please. Thanks, Dave. You didn't, uh, okay. Um, you had one about uh, DEI, Al, did you wanna? Uh, yeah, I was, yeah. Let me, um, let me jump back over here and see, look at the slides on my end. Um, right, I, I wanted to talk about um, DEI. So I can read it off, I can read the slide off my end. All right, um, I'm sure you got it up there already. Yes. Okay, thank you, sorry. So OER can easily serve as a vehicle for DEI. When you adopt or adapt to produce original material, you, you can choose to make no assumptions about the student's background. The images and examples can be selected or edited to be neutral or inclusive and can avoid colloquialisms and overly complex language structure. And many OER materials are accessible or can be made so OpenStax, which I use, and Pressbooks, which I use, have, ex have accessibility, uh, accessibility commitment statements, which basically uh, adhere to best practices for accessibility. And now in the next slide, in the next slide. This is the uh, OpenStax one. Right, sorry. I, you know what happened? I was ex accidentally looking at the other, my end. My apologies again. This is one of the open source OERs that I use, is OpenStax. OpenStax is peer reviewed and also has an accessibility commitment statement. Uh, when we say peer reviewed, I mean it's peer reviewed by uh, subject matter ex people with subject matter expertise. And it's done in a manner very similar to what paid textbooks use as well. Uh, considering it also has an accessibility commitment, uh, it's a, it's, it actually does at least as good, if not better, than most paid texts. And if I may get the next slide, please. Thanks. My Open Math is a coursework based on open source texts. I, excuse me, uh, is it, it's a coursework built, built around OER texts such as OpenStax and has the option of designing one's own coursework. And in the next slide, we see press books. Well, this is the my press book page, the uh, the page on the site from the uh, from the list of other OER sources. Uh, press books. Press books is an open source content management system, which is portable and allows the use of H5P, and I'll talk about that now. H5P is a suite of learning activities in an HTML5 package using an open source Java code. Some of the activities in the suite are branching scenario. That is, you can have video branching scenarios. Um, this is really useful for people that need to train in sensitive areas. It has also uh, augmented reality where 
uh, the there's like a hidden QR code in pictures, and the students can then use their cameras and other devices to um, scan them, or they can simply take a picture of what they're looking at. There's also Cornell notes, with, which allows the students to directly attach their notes and ideas to a text. I just put the press book in the chat for everyone to check out. Okay, um, that's fine. Uh, would you like me to share what it looks like, or should we kind of maybe do that some other time? Yeah, I'll uh, let's have them check it out on their own time and uh, okay. keep moving. Oh, okay, doc. And uh, the other thing that the, the thing that I use for H5P mostly is the essay, which can be uh, fine tuned for keywords, length, and other parameters. Um, the one of the nice things is that uh, Pressbooks is working with H5P to create something called a grade return and a results viewer for Canvas and Blackboard. Blackboard grade return sends scores for some for some block of H5P activities, maybe like for a quiz or for a section or a chapter, uh, it sends it to Canvas or the Blackboard um, gradebook. And the results viewer allows both the instructor and the student to review the responses to each of the H5P activities. And this is currently being tested among a group of people, which I'm a part of. Uh, a Pressbook also has an accessibility commitment statement. And now, thanks, in the next slide, we have uh, summary data in the same form as my colleague, uh, Cindy. And I've uh, done the analysis for this. And basically what this says, for those uh, not initiated into the statistics lingo, is that uh, I've done a two-tailed, two-prop z-test, and that just means that I've looked at the difference between uh, the, the how how good you know the, how good the open the OER text is relative to the paid text, and on the left here on the where it says um, just below on the left you see a little box and it says z. And it says P. The Z is the test statistic, and it just says it's the test statistic. It says it's six about uh, just 0 0.62 standard deviations above the zero. In other words, this test assumes there is no difference, and it is only uh, not just over half a standard deviation. The P values just says to see something like this uh, is not unusual here. 0 0.53. Uh, percent chance that you would see something this unusual or more unusual. That's not unusual at all. In fact, it's extremely likely that will happen. The On the right, you get an associated 95% confidence interval. Note that the confidence interval contains zero. What's important about that? The, the assumption is that there is no difference. Zero says there really is no difference. If anything, the interval is a bit on the high side, which could possibly indicate that there is some benefit to the OER text. In any, in any case, there is uh, strong evidence, this presents strong evidence that the OER text and the OER coursework is doing at least as good a job as the paid text and coursework. And then on, on my final slide, we have, ta-da, savings. And this is a big deal for both our students and uh, for our community. Uh, the 72 students in my data saved approximately $8,000, assuming that they only purchased the online access to the text and the coursework. Had they purchased the hard copy text, they would have spent over $16,000. And so I think this altogether gives us uh, a very strong gives very strong support for the use of OER, and I'm very excited to continue working with this and developing my um, my course. Uh, thanks uh, uh, for it to everyone, and Dave, thank you, and I guess we'll hand it over to the next speaker. Thanks, Al. Um, the next speaker is going to be David Myers, um, our welding faculty.
Um, and Dave, I believe I've given you presenter permissions and you can go ahead and uh, share screen. Okay. Um, I'll stop video share. Do I go into share? Is that how I, mm -hmm. I do it? Open system preferences. Um, if you select entire screen, I think you have multiple tabs, right? So maybe you should, you want to do entire screen so you could go between the different tabs pretty easily. Okay. Um, so when I hit share, I don't know, it, it's doing all the security stuff to me. Um, screen recording now. Okay. So it's this button down here where it just says share. Mm -hmm. Once you click it, you can select screen or application, go to screen and then go to, um, the share entire screen option. And then we'll see her. Shit. And it's not doing it. We I, can, uh... I, I've got a couple of videos to play. Um, and then we can come back to Dave, if that's okay, Dr. Nancy. Uh, you're muted. muted. If it's a PowerPoint, um, he could share it with with you, and then you could present if you want. That. It's his Canvas course and different my content Canvas that course. he's developed. Um, could he, could you just talk about it then? I mean, we're, I can just talk about sure. it. I could totally do that. So, um, so I teach welding, and uh, I've been teaching metallurgy for a long time, and. Um, I've used uh, various textbooks and all of the textbooks that are out there, um, they cover metallurgy in a, in a broad sense. And for those who don't know, metallurgy is the uh, science that explains the proper properties of B and the behaviors of metals in their microstructures. And so as welders, uh, our students really need to have a good grasp on uh, what's what's going on on uh, on a level that they can't necessarily see with the naked eye. So um, uh, there are no textbooks out there that are you know made for welding students. And when I look for OER material, um, they and I went back and forth uh, looking at several different options that were out there, but. They're either um, more like a blacksmithing class or something geared towards high school students or on the other end of the gamut, uh, geared towards uh, engineering students. And um, so there is a, there is a big hole. Um, and uh, so I decided that I would take the online class that I have already made and retool it and make it for uh, for an OER class. And uh, I, I found that uh, my my method was was a little flawed. Uh, it would have been easier to build the class from scratch than to take material that I had and uh, edit it so that it would be um, OER worthy. And so there were a lot of pictures that had to be swapped out. Um, I had to write a lot of uh, my own material based on what I know of metallurgy. And um, so it, it took quite a bit of time to, to get the course into shape. And um, we constantly were going through it and um, weeding out and changing. And um, 
So, uh, so the end result is I was able to create a course that could be modified um, based on the needs of the, the course and the instructor and the students. Um, uh, what I wanted to make was something that was, uh, I'd have paired modules where we would do an assignment where we would learn about one aspect of metallurgy and then uh, the next week there would be a, a lab class where in the shop we would uh, do projects that would demonstrate the things that we learned the week before and um, having students that are mostly hands-on learners I, I thought that that would be a good way to go uh, the difficulty with this was you felt that uh, the students would get caught up in the in the shop projects and uh, kind of abandon other other things that they other priorities that they had in uh, in their classes as well. So um, <clears throat> what I did, did was I, I made um, seven weeks of classes and they start off with metallurgy and we move through different aspects of metallurgy and then uh, we're talking about the properties of different metals and then we start talking about the behavior of metals when they're welded and then we start talking about discontinuities and welds that can can occur and then we talk about um, welding inspection and so uh, every welding student should have some degree of experience with welding inspection in the sense that they need to evaluate their own work. And um, so then the last two weeks would be uh, group projects where they would, they would do projects that would uh, demonstrate different aspects of what we learned in the first seven weeks. And uh, then they would have a final exam. Excellent. Uh, Dave, I'm going to, I'm going to ask if you could stop there. It's fascinating. Uh, we, yes. Do we have one more speaker? Is that my understanding? Um, I, I've got a five minute video. I, we have a hard okay. cut off at 45. Um, as close to it as we can. So if you want to do the video, that would be terrific. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Dave. And then, yeah. I, and then I'll paste some info in the chat. Mm -hmm. Um, so you all can follow up with us um, individually, as well as learn about all our OER heroes and their projects. So Excellent. those there weren't any questions that I saw. So so you yeah yeah the video and thank you for for sharing all this information. Of course, let me play that final video and um, we can end it a little early. We don't have to play the full video, but okay. Are you seeing my video? Yes, uh, okay. I'm seeing a screen, yeah. Hello guys, my name is Aron, Aron Barquet. I am part of this wonderful- And you're able to hear the sound? I'm hearing it, but I'm not seeing the video. I'm seeing like a window screen. Okay. Let's do this. OER group in uh, Renton Technical College, and uh, yep. I am going to share with you guys a little bit of my experience uh, with this uh, specific uh, product that I had no idea that it existed. And what I can tell you is that I heard about it in a meeting. One of my colleagues mentioned OERs. I asked him what it was. His name is Nizar, by the way, and um, he told me what it was, And but I never went further that I, I just stuck with the uh, idea of like having materials out there designed to be shared freely without worrying about copyrights. And uh, then the pandemic came, and when the pandemic came, um, things changed. <laughs> Things changed in education, like my teaching modality changed. And, you know, I was in the need of like different types of materials. Like 
and especially digital materials that I could use. And, uh, so um, I started exploring, right? So I, I got an invitation from Day and Nizar to participate in our uh, OER project here in Ransom Tech. And the first thing that I did was uh, explore, explore the universe of OER, right? And uh, it was really a universe. <laughs> for years that I it was overwhelming like I don't know what what can I uh, actually uh, choose like uh, nothing is designed for me by me and nothing is designed for multi-level because I'm a multi-level foreign language ESL instructor here at Renton Tech. I'm going to skip to the last part of it. Uh, um, I didn't know very much about OERs and I have been learning and I, I'm still learning a lot. And I know that it was a lot of curating and a lot of time that I spent to find things that adjust to my uh, my courses. And now I am creating documents. I am creating PowerPoints. I am designing my, my Canvas uh, courses to be OERs, to be shared with other teachers, uh, instead of only like adapting from others in the universe of OERs. I came to the, the, the conclusion that it would be better and more beneficial to create more materials. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do now. There's where I am. All right. So it sounds to me from what we just saw that not only was OER a great option for this gentleman, but he, the designing of Canvas almost seemed to be enhanced as a result, which, you know, is a bonus, right? Yes, definitely. I mean, it's, um, you know, we're, we're, we're really, um, a lot of us are reinventing the wheel um, in our fields, right? And that's just how, especially with uh, technical and trades uh, programs. And that's why we got that grant from the federal government, because there's just, uh, for a lot of us, there's nothing particular in our field that can really address um, right. the needs. And then um, when, you know, we support our colleagues to develop these resources, and they kind of release it. Um, we get such great feedback about uh, in terms of like, wow, like I've been looking for this kind of resource. I remember um, helping one of our um, math faculty, our other math faculty, um, with creating a, a culinary math course um, and releasing it into the press book. And uh, we got rave reviews and feedback because there wasn't anything else out there addressing that particular topic. Well, um, I'm impressed. I admire. Thank you for sharing the books that you finished a little bit further ahead than my institution, but um, thank you for posting your email addresses as well. I think Dave has, has created some interest. We're all interested in this metallurgy course, at, et cetera. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I don't see any questions in chat, so I think we're all going to be get, getting in touch with you after the fact. Okay. Sounds and great. Thank Dave, you so much for having us. Absolutely. Dave, you would be kind enough to, to stop recording. I will do so. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you.